there are some distinctions that we need to make about the metadata record that describes an object. And there are three important distinctions that we need to make. And let me just step through these one at a time. The first one we've already talked about, the distinction between item level and collection level metadata, which was a big enough issue that I thought it was worth treating it separately in its own video, right? An item is a single object, a collection is a collection of objects, and you can have a metadata record that describes either thing, an individual item or a collection of items. Now, this gets slightly complicated by the fact that you can argue over what an item is. Is a book, for example, a single item? Or is it a collection of chapters, right? You can imagine, for example, some kinds of books where you might want to have an individual record for each item. Like, for example, Gutenberg Bibles are very rare and some libraries and museums only have a single page of a Gutenberg Bible. So the page is the item, but in another library that has an entire Gutenberg, maybe the item is the book, right? So there's some fuzziness here about what's an item and what's a collection. But fundamentally, the distinction is between individual items and collection level metadata. The second distinction to be made here is, is the metadata record embedded in the object or is there a link from the metadata record to the object and possibly vice versa? Um, the classic example of embedded metadata is the copyright page in printed books. Now, I'm sure you've seen things like this a million times. Every book that you've probably ever seen has a page that lists the copyright information. So this is a book called Introduction to Metadata, which is a really excellent book, by the way, <clears throat> um, published 2008, published by the Getty Institute. And this page is metadata about the book. It provides authorship, um, subject headings, which are down at the bottom, down off the bottom of this screen, so you can't see them. Authorship, subject headings, you know, date of publication, all of the kind of classic, what's called bibliographic metadata about this book. Right, so this is the classic example of embedded metadata. Linked metadata, on the other hand, kind of the classic example of that, is the library card catalog, right? The library card tells you some of the same bibliographic metadata, author, title, probably publication date, you know, call number, etc. Some of the same bibliographic metadata, but it's not part of the book. It is a separate object located in a separate location in the library, and it provides a link to the original object in the form of a call number. The call number is the link, right? You look up the call number on the page, right? In this case, that number right there. And that tells you where on the shelves to find this particular book, right? So there is a link between the metadata record and the original object. So, is the metadata record embedded in the object or is it a separate object with a link? The third important distinction is who is the metadata for? Or what is the metadata for? Is it for human consumption or is it for consumption by computers or computer algorithms of one form or another? Right? So, <clears throat> excuse me, the, again, classic example of human, metadata intended for human consumption, excuse me, is the library card catalog. The idea is that a human being would walk over to the, the 
uh, cabinet of catalog cards, pull out one of these drawers, flip through it, look up the information about a book, find the call number, and go find that book on the shelves. Right? The library catalog card is intended for human users. Now, not all, even bibliographic data, is intended for human users. This is a MARC record, which stands for Machine Readable Cataloging, which um, I am not going to get into here, but machine readable cataloging, MARC records, were a very early technology developed by the library world to move bibliographic data about books back and forth between library computer systems. And, you know, some of the data in a MARC record is human readable, but a lot of it really isn't. And it's the machine readable cataloging. It's not intended to be human readable. This is a record that was intended to be passed between computer systems, right? So the MARC record was never intended for human consumption. It was intended for machine consumption. And here we have an HTML record. This is an HTML file. It's the code behind the web page for my school, the School of Information and Library Science. Now, HTML rides the line between human consumption and machine consumption. Obviously, one of the primary functions of HTML is to provide data to your web browser to give the browser instructions for how to display the page on the screen. And that's an important function of HTML. But HTML is also relatively human readable because you get things like this that say, you know, in this particular place, display the following text. Right? So HTML is an interesting halfway point between metadata that's intended to be for human beings and metadata that's intended to be for machines. So we have three important distinctions about a metadata record. The level of metadata. At what level is the description? What is the metadata record describing? Right? Then where is the metadata record? And what is the record's relationship with the object being described? And then who or what is the metadata for? for a human, for a computer algorithm. 